who do you think will win? Text M for Marta Rosian or L for Lara to 53548. Text right now. For the introductions for our main event, here's Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, from Wynn, Las Vegas, this is the main event of the evening. Being presented to you by Bob Aram, Top Rank Incorporated, in association with La Cerveza Tecate Con Caracter. This bout, a 12 round WBC Super Welterweight World Title Eliminator. Supervising for the WBC, Craig Hubble. The judges at ringside are Dave Moretti, Ricardo Ocasio, and Jerry Roth. The referee, Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the fight capital of the world, we find out quién es el más macho. Introducing first, the fighter in the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing red, white, green, and gold. When he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 153 and one half pounds. And in 19 professional bouts, he maintains a record of 17 victories against one lone defeat, one draw, and 11 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The two-time world amateur champion, and now the number one ranked super welterweight contender, de Guantanamo, Cuba, Erislandi, el oro de Guantanamo, Lara. Standing across the ring in the red corner, wearing blue with silver trim, when he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 153 pounds. As an amateur, he proudly represented the USA in the 04 Olympics. And after entering the ring 32 times as a professional, he maintains an undefeated record of 32 victories. 20 of those victories coming by way of knockout. The number two ranked contender in the super welterweight division, representing Abovian Armenia. Banes, the nightmare. Twelve rounds. Obey my commands. Good luck. Win a suerte. Touch gloves. Go to work. Vanis Matarosian wants to get it going here in his career. He's 32 and 0 but he has not yet faced the top of the division. Evers Landy Lara wants to keep it going here. He's fared very well against the best 154 pounders in the world. Yeah, Mar DeRosian told us, my Armenian fans, they support me, but even they say, step it up, Vanis. Well, he's in tough tonight against Lara. Talked about Lara and his son in Cuba celebrating a birthday. We need to send our congratulations to Vanes and his wife Gabby. A week ago, they welcomed their daughter Ariana to the world to go along with son Andrew. So Vanes said that listen, the baby came early. Training camp has gone well. There's been no injuries. Everything has been perfect. I'm more focused now than I've ever been. We'll see if it pays off in the ring against Lara. But Erosian's been on the deck three times in his career. Lara's never been down. Roy, what about the fact that Lara's trainer is Ronnie Shields, who for a while worked with Marta Rosian. Ronnie felt that Marta Rosian really hasn't changed from when he worked with him. Is that an advantage for Lara? Well, I think it's an advantage because now his corner knows Marta Rosian better than Marta Rosian's corner knows Lara. However, 
Uh, I think that also will encourage Martin Rosen to come in and prove that he's gotten better. So we'll have to see. But right away, the only thing I don't like about Martin Rosen is how close he has his hands to his head. These guys are already exchanging a little bit more maybe than some would have anticipated this early in the fight. They're both coming out to impress, and they're both trying to win this fight. They're throwing big punches. Uh, Lara throwing a good straight left hand to Marty Rosen's body. As you see, Marty Rosen's body is really red already from the left hand. And Marty Rosen throwing some big shots to Lara's head, trying to get that respect. This is because both guys said of the other guy, if you hit him, they're going to want to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mother Russell didn't say didn't say that Laura was going to run a run. He said Laura wouldn't take the punch well. Laura said Mother Russell's going to run, and so did Shields. Now right hand by Laura, snap back ahead of Mother Russell. There's that long left to the body by Laura. What he'll do is continually try to throw that shot, and he'll try to eventually change it to an overhand left and catch Martin Rosen looking for the body shot. End of round one. Okay, very, very good round, very good rounds. Everything is, everything is good. Yeah, everything is good. Look, keep using the jab. Just stay busy. Just stay busy with the left, with the jab here because he's scoring with the jab. Okay? We, on these rounds, on these rounds, you know, look, it's a good round for him, okay? Keep going to the body like. From the outside, the right hand hook, okay? All right? You just need to get a little close with the thing. All right? You just need the thing, the thing, the thing, and drop the right hand hook on right away, okay? All right? According to Copy Box, Martin Rosen landed three punches in the round. Out of 22, those three connects with power shots. Lara landed six of nine power shots, 11 in total of his 36 punches thrown. Both were really good amateurs. Lara with more success on the international stage, but when you are, when you have national success in this country, it means you're facing the likes of Tim Bradley when uh, Martin Rosen was uh, an amateur, Austin Trout, Andre Berto, and he has wins against all those guys in the amateurs, Martin Rosen does. Yeah, he has a very good amateur pedigree, especially for this country. But the only thing that's in the back of his mind is that he's 0-3 against the Cubans. So he wants to come out and change that tonight, and as a professional, he gets more rounds to try to change it. And in the run-up between Athens and Beijing, the name Lara as the 2005 world champion was one of the people that was being talked about as part of the Cuban team that was going to go to Beijing and potentially win the gold medal. And then he defected. That body shot right there is going to be a very effective punch all night long for Lara. Marderosian jumped in. Lara blocked a lot of it. I think Marderosian wants to take this fight to the distance because he feels the further down the line it goes, the better he shall fare. Stop! Quick! Like an accidental flash of heads there. Is Art erosion paws at the left eye. He's been cut three times in his career. All three times it's been the left eye. I tell you what, they're both throwing some really big punches in this fight early. But as you mentioned, Roy, Lara's having real success with that straight left hand to the body and uh, or body shots, period. And uh, if Matarosan thinks he's going to wear Lara down physically as this fight wears on, that doesn't bode well for him taking those body shots. Well, it doesn't, but right now, as you see, Lara has gotten a little bit afraid of Marty Rose's power. And he's starting to back up a lot more than we started backing up earlier. 
Earlier, he was willing to stand in there and take a gamble and try to land a shot. Now he's grabbing and he gets yeah, he's or he's get out of there. So. No more, no more, no more. Box. Martin Rosen definitely has got his respect, so. Martin Rosen insists that he's the kind of fighter who will fight up or down to the level of opposition. And that the reason he hasn't yet looked spectacular in his pro career is because he hasn't faced this kind of challenge. Well, he has it right now. Work our way to the end of round number two. This shot's scheduled for 12 rounds. And there is the wife of Islande Lara, Yudi, watching anxiously here at ringside in Las Vegas. Well, Mikey Garcia stopped Jonathan Barros with a left hand in the eighth round. And Roy being attended to by his people, obviously, you go into it with tremendous high hopes. Let's talk about sort of the emotion that the fighter feels after being defeated as he was starting to work his way into the fight. It's kind of difficult, man. I mean, nobody likes to lose. No fighter do does. And that's why boxing is one of the oldest sports, but yet one of the most real-life sports because nobody wants to lose in anything, even in life. So boxing is one of these sports, though, that teaches you right away that when you get knocked down or when you lose, you must get back up and resettle and ride even harder. Barros, a former world champion who made two title defenses, suffers the fourth loss of his professional career. We begin round number three of this scheduled 12-round bout. Here's Rondé Lara and Vanis Martirosian. And I think this fight is about to get a little bit more interesting because this round, somebody should land a good headshot against somebody. I don't know who yet, but somebody should land something big this round. Why, just because you see them getting closer to each other? Yeah, they're getting closer and they're getting more anxious and they know each other now. You see how Arizona came at him just then? Oh. <laughs> see what I'm saying? They're both starting to get a little bit more anxious. Don't do that again. So. In other words, the fight's know, about to break out. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, we, we showed you earlier at the weigh-in, they got in each other's grill, and Lara actually Stop. shoved Martirosian. Well, that sort of intensity is now definitely carried into the ring. Yeah, good right upshot by, by, by Lara just now, too. He threw a left, left hand lead, followed by a good right upper jab. Short count right from Lara away from the attack of Martirosia. Good left hand by Lara. There's definitely more mustard on these shots this round so far. That's what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> oh, good hook. should go more to Lara's body because, you know, Lara is definitely comfortable moving around, but when he, he's attacked, he throws both of his hands up pretty high. So Martin Rosen has to take advantage of that and do like, like Lara has been doing to him and go to his body very hard. And Lara's using his shoulders well to avoid those shots upstairs. Turning and catching those shots on his upper arms and shoulders. Which is another reason that Marty Rosen should go to the body some because he would land those body shots a little bit, slow him down some, then he could land up top. Tried just then and Lara picked it off. Beautiful defense by Lara right there. You gotta love that. It's like he saw it coming, Roy, and started <laughs> to move with it. And blocked it with both hands, the right and the left, like that. But you can't let a man keep pitching the balls at you like that because eventually one of them will hit you. And Matarosin has Lauren moving in the direction he wants there, clockwise. Yeah. You know, one of the things about the fighters from Cuba is that they have such extended amateur backgrounds that sometimes they don't fare well over a distance fight. Maybe that's what Money Rosen is trying to get him into. Next Saturday night, World Championship Boxing has an exciting matchup for the lightweight title between Antonio DeMarco and Adrian Broner. Also top American heavyweight prospect, Seth Mitchell faces Jonathan Banks, who is also doubling as Vladimir Klitschko's new trainer. 
One week later, Andre Berto returns. The former welterweight champ faces Robert the Ghost Guerrero, who in his last fight looked strong and moving from lightweight to welterweight. Okay? Please, let's see if in there, okay? All right? Boys, they look great, okay? PC, what I said, a fight was about to break out. Eris London Lara missed with a straight left hand over the top. He grabbed him in a little headlock, little MMA style, and he dropped him the pressure on the right there. He saw the arm flex. Then Martin Rosen, in retaliation, comes back with a little right hook to the body and said, hey, this guy's cheating. Now they both point at each other. I like well, that from Martin Rosen, Roy. <laughs> I, I he wasn't too. gonna be bullied. That's exactly right. You gotta love that. All right, let's check in with our unofficial ringside store, Stop. Harold Letterman. Okay, Stop. Bob, I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Vanish Monterosian. I love the fact that this guy gets off first, jumps on him, keeps him backing up, lands that hard right hand, and he ain't letting Lara land that hard left hand. I mean, Lara's moving both sides, and Vanish just jumps on him and whacks him with a hard right hand. And this has been going on for three rounds. Get him off first, landing the hardest shots. No, no, no. Three to nothing, Monterosian. I wouldn't be surprised if judges had this fight all over the place, including yeah. the exact opposite score of Harold. I wouldn't either because I kind of don't agree with Harold in that one, no. but I usually do agree with Harold, but I think it may be more like two to one. Well, I agree with you. Um, I don't see Matarosa pitching a shutout, but then again, we're calling the fight, and Harold is sitting here attentively <laughs> scoring the fight. That's exactly right, and he's one of the best I've ever seen at doing that. Let's just say there's a lot of fights still to go. As one fighter has picked up the intensity, the other fighter has matched it so far. Even though there's not excellent sustained action, the intensity continues to be ratcheted up. You know what, though, Max? I, ain't seen, I haven't seen anybody land a really good, clear headshot yet, uh, except right there. <laughs> on cue. Just as I was saying. <laughs> Lara landed that left hand. Flicks a jab out. Well, what could Lara be doing more of? Well, he could be attacking the body more, but I think he's getting a little fatigued. I, I got to be honest with you. I think his body is starting to fatigue a little bit and uh, to wear down a little bit. And I think Martin Rosen no, no, went to no. the body right there, which is a smart thing. If, if, if Lara wants to win this fight, he has to continue to attack like he was doing earlier. Can't let is, that, is that a question in your mind, even though last year Lara withstood over a thousand punches from Paul Williams and went 12 rounds? Yeah, but see, against Paul Williams, Paul Williams wasn't the best puncher. Martin Rosen is a better puncher to me than Paul Williams. Oh, low blow. that's a low blow. That was low. That was low. You hit him low. That's okay. Time. Okay. So, Martin Rosen. I know it wasn't intentional, but don't do it. Under the rules has up to five minutes to regroup. And he might take six. I've never seen a fighter take the whole five minutes. <laughs> There's too much Didn't pressure. Hopkins once. He took my, he may have taken uh, <laughs> four minutes seven. and 30 yeah. seconds. He, he probably four, came four closest. But there's a lot of pressure here. This <laughs> from the crowd to you know get the get the event back underway. You ready? And there Time you go. Matarosin probably could have used some more time, but didn't take it. <laughs> nice taunting Lara a little bit. This fight definitely has an edge. And it started at the weigh-in yesterday. No, no, no! Box. Tell you what, the referee has his hands full here. Yeah, I, I think right there, Jane Eddy could have let them punch because Stop. if you have one hand free, use it. <laughs> I think he's afraid of the dirty tactics that might take place. Right. Keep control of the fight. Exactly. End of round four. Look, you rocked him. You rocked him with the, with the left hand already. I need more left hands going. You got to get busy, okay? Come on, you got to get busy, okay? I need you to get busy, okay? Look. Keep shooting the left hand, more left hands, okay? The left hands are there. All day long, all day long. Close your eyes, close your eyes. What? Yeah. Let's keep going more with the left hand, okay? Here's what I tell you, I think Marty, I mean, Alarm may be showing a little fatigue. I thought usually a guy pushes his head down, but this seemed to be an intentional low blow. His head wasn't pushed. 
He that just was a two punch combination. Exactly. Left downstairs, head to the chin. Exactly. So I don't think he really did it unintentionally. I think it may have been a planned shot. Look that way. <laughs> So round number five begins. You heard Ronnie Shields in the corner of Lara say, you gotta use that left hand more. Roy, it seems as if Lara has completely gotten away from that straight left hand of the body as he lands a nice combination to start round five. Because of landing it to the body, that's why you saw him be able to land it to the head right there. Because Marta Rose, I, mean, I probably thought he was gonna come to the body again and didn't back up and Lara landed it to the head. That was the advantage of him throwing that left body shot. Scott! Stop. Oh, on the no. break again. No, that was bad. Don't do that again. That's why Rose has done that twice. I don't blame him. Uh, I think he's taking Laura's dirty tactics, and I think Laura has been somewhat dirty here. And he's taking it as a sign of desperation from Laura. Laura got caught with the right hand going straight back. And he's not going to let Laura be the boss in there, so to speak. That's the smartest thing he can do. And like I said, if you're in Vinus's corner, you got to think that as the fight goes on, it tilts in his favor. Vinus has fought very well so far, particularly considering the gap in world-class experience on the professional level between these two, and the fact that Lara was a pretty substantial favorite going into this fight. At four to one here at the win. The thing I think that hurts Laura Max is the thing that you said about him before he fought Paul Williams, which is he's not really a busy guy. He tries to be almost too economical with his punches. He doesn't want to land, throw a shot unless he almost knows he's going to land. Yeah, and it seems to be here he's relying on his defense to set up pot shot opportunities for him and counter punch opportunities for him, hoping to hurt Matarosa with something. And I think that's why Harold has given money Rosen every round. Right here, Monte Rosa must put the pressure on Lara. He can't allow Lara to take his time and fight at his own pace. Lara can do this all night long. And Monte Rosa is not a guy who does any one thing particularly well, but he's a nice, well-rounded fighter and a tough kid. See, right there, he should have went to the body, then back up to the head first. He's going to have to outwork Lara here. Exactly. You're not going to hit the Cuban as experienced as he is with no one shot, just, just throwing one shot at a time. Left hand side from Lara. Now erosion. Tries to chop in with a right. Well, you know, this fight, very subtle in these rounds, tough rounds to score. We're going to give you a look at sort of the point of view of what the judges are looking at. And Dave Moretti, one of the three judges that's scoring this fight, and he had a camera right over his shoulder. And he's looking between the ring ropes, but you see, you know, the referees in the way, actions taking place on the far side of the ring. Harold, how do you negotiate some of these things? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I'm watching Vanish Mata Rosen with that aggressive right hand. I think it's a, uh, Dave Moretti's got a good view of the fight, that's for sure. The referee's not blocking him. The fight is not blocking him. He should be Well, the point, Harold, was that, like that the ref, that the judges have different points of view from different sides of the ring, and sometimes you get varied scorecards, I guess. Yeah, well, that's why you got three judges on three different sides. <laughs> Tell them, Harold. As Harold was writing down his score, he missed the part where the ref was blocking Moretti's view. <laughs> so we begin round number six, scheduled for 12. Watch your feet. Watch your buckles. Very rare you see two angry guys go 12 rounds. I think these guys are too angry to really last 12 rounds. I mean, they may, but... With all the anger involved, something's bound to happen soon. 
also with a southpaw versus the right-handed fighter, um, and and Madero, and we've already seen a couple clashes of heads, maybe at least one intentional from Lara. Madarosan's cut in the past over that left eye, and that's also a danger for him. It's happened on three different occasions to Madarosan. You see low blows, late blows, hitting on the flinch. <laughs> Headlocks. A lot of anger up here. See right there, Marty Rosen, this is what gets me about him. He has to unload to the body when he does get a chance. You can't hit a guy with, with that much experience with one head shot at a time. And Eris Lande has to realize that the judges are not going to judge in his favor by him throwing one shot at a time either. I think Matarosan thinks he's in position to land because he has no, his no, no. left foot Stop. outside of Lara's no, right no. foot. But when he that comes box. in, or when Lara comes in, Lara quickly changes that and gets position on Matarosan with his feet. And that's that experience factor, uh, Max. Right, Matarosan thinks he's in position to land, but by the time it, it comes, he's not. And Just plus, like there. And plus, he's only throwing one shot. Though. If he threw three or four, maybe he could land before he, before uh, the kid moves out the way, before Lara moves. You know, and, and what Martirosian just came, kind of came wildly winging in when you saw Lara sidestep it. I mean, that's cut right out of the amateur game. Exactly. Good hook by Martirosian. But he threw three punches that time, and the third one landed. Tell you what, Lara is breathing very hard, Max. Yeah, Lara is doing a lot of things, I think, that coming into the fight, he might have supposed would be enough to control Matarosan. And in certain respects, he has. Right there, a really good straight left. But is he winning these rounds doing this? Is he doing enough to carry these rounds? I, I think oh. some of them he is. Some of them, yes, but enough of them. Like in the last round, I mean, he started off the round, a couple combinations. End of round number six. Better round, okay? That was a better round. That was a lot better round. Okay, now listen, still. Let him run into the jab, but then shoot the left hand right away. Let him spin, let him spin. Okay? Give him a D-ring. You're pressing him and he's running like that. He can't win those rounds, son, okay? All right, keep pressing him. Make him run, okay? Keep letting him run, okay? All right, now we need to hit the right hand and the left hook from the end. Put more together. Put, put three together for me, okay? Here you see Lara come in. <laughs> you heard Freddie Rhodes say to Martin Rose, you put three together. Roy, the one time in that round he put three together, the third one landed, that left hand. That's exactly right. That's why I said if he puts punches together, he may land the second, third, or fourth, fourth Stop. punch. But throw one at a time, he's never going to kiss Lara. Box. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Okay, okay Bob. I've got a four ounce to two. 58, 56. That is Mata Rosian. I just think he's too aggressive. Eris Lady Lara not landed that left hand enough. I mean, he circles. He flips out that right hand, which is probably illegal because he backhands it. Lara is cut over his left, or, or by his left eye, it looks like. And, and that was a right hand that Marty Rosian landed. That was the best punch that I've seen him land to the head all night. Harold, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to say I've got a 42 on a Rosian because I like his aggressiveness and I like the fact that he's getting off first and landing that hard right hand. 42 vanish Mata Rosian. Mata Rosian's obviously doing something right because against Paul Williams, we saw Lara able to fly his head constantly during the course of a round. Here, once or twice a round, you notice that. That, that Mata Rosian's head snaps back from a shot, but it's not nearly as consistent. Well, there it was. Not nearly as consistent as in the Williams fight. Yeah, there's concern on the face of Lara as he was pawing at that left eye where there appears to be a cut. Well, the difference is, is Marta Rosa is a much better puncher as far as power-wise than Paul Williams. So, Lara can't do the things he did against Williams and not be afraid of getting hit. He has to worry about getting hit by the big shot from Marta Rosa. That he didn't have to worry about against Paul Williams. 
As you know, Paul Williams is an, uh, a cumulative puncher. He throws a thousand punches a fight. So none of them are really spectacularly hard. He just throws a lot, a lot of them. First time that Lara has been cut in his career. Lara is starting to find the range against Williams. It was the overhand left, and he picked that up from Sergio Martinez watching that fight against Williams. And here, the straight left hand seems to be having increasing success this round from Lara. Mario Ross is, is, is seeming to be a little tired himself. Oh, good shot. Scott, you turn your head and you help. <laughs> oh, another good left hand. Really found the range with that left hand this round. With the counter left mainly. And what he's doing is allowing Mario Ross to come right down the middle. He's taking one step back off of the attack, and then he's throwing his own left hand. Yeah, in the earlier rounds, it was maybe two or three of those that landed cleanly in a round. And here, there's been half a dozen. Montrosian brings that right hand. Lara Stop. steps in with his oh, left. And if Montrosian keeps backing straight back, he's going to consistently eat that left hand. End of round seven. Good counter left hand by Lara. They're going to have to make an adjustment in Montrose's time, corner time. because right now Lara can't miss with it. <laughs> Freddie Roach is a five-time trainer of the year. Wife Beauty looking on. Her husband cut. Okay, go to water. I got it. Hey, I see it. Hey, I see that's the best kind of rounds we need, okay? Get that, get that out of his eye. There you go. Okay, look, listen. You got to keep picking it up like that, okay? Keep shooting that left hand in. I need more punches this round. Now we're coming down to, to the real rounds now, okay? Okay? Let's pick it up now. You won that round, okay? You keep working like that, okay? Here you see Martin Rosen step off the right hand and counter with the short overhand right, which caused a cut on Lara, I believe. But later in the round, you see Lara step off of the hook and right hand and come back with a one-two of his own from the southpaw position. Great left hand right on the chin. And Marta Rosen took it well. And I did receive confirmation from referee Jay Nady in between rounds that that cut on the left eye of Lara was as the result of that punch that we showed. So if for any reason that cut worsened during the course of this fight and Lara could not continue, it would be a win for Marta Rosen as opposed to an accidental clash of heads in which they'd have to go to the scorecards. Oh, Marta Rosen just hurt him bad Stop. with a left hook, I think. Let go. Step back. Good left Come hook on. by Marta Rosen. And he avoided the left hand from Lara there. What did he do there, Roy, to avoid that left hand that time? I think he threw the hook and went either to the left or to the right. He didn't stay straight up or back straight back. Well, he needs to keep doing that. Yeah, but he's thinking too much. You see how he's waiting right there? That's getting him hit because he stands right there. He's just a steel target. You cannot be a steel target and bang straight back like that. And then he went straight back again and another left hand he got him. We're right into the left hand every time, just like that. See that? Two more. Every time. You cannot bag straight back from a southpaw. The old saying is class tells over time. <laughs> the longer a fight goes, the more it favors the more skillful, experienced fighter. Marty Rosen's going to have to either Stop. ratchet up the offense Stop. or figure out a way to avoid that straight left or both. Well, that left hand to the body, I think, has worn him down some as well. So I think he's just as tired, Stop. if not tired, than, than Laurie is. Again, Lara trying to set up that straight left hand. And as long as Lara is allowed to attack first, which is what they mean when they say be first, then Marta Rosa is never going to catch him. Like that. As long as he can mount his attack like that first, no. he's always going to have the advantage. Thank you. Box. Lara has thrown almost twice as many jabs as he has power shots in this fight. No, 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 no. Stand up. Box. And I think Jay Nady is doing a very good job in this fight. Keeping it as clean as he can keep it because these two guys don't intend to stay clean. Agreed. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Thank 
Thank you. We work our way to the end of round of eight. The schedule for 12. There's that left hand again from Stop. Lara that finds the mark. Stop. Well, we showed you the boxing calendar and some great fights to finish out 2012, hey. including next week's World Championship Boxing. On November 17 in Atlantic City, 130-pound star Adrian Broner makes his World Championship Boxing debut. Looking to continue a string of impressive performances as he moves up to a new weight class. Brutal body shots. Escobedo trying to hang on, getting hammered against the rope. And Joel Diaz is holding up a towel. He's seen it up. Adrian Broner's got to have a TKO victory. His opponent is lightweight title holder Antonio DeMarco. The rugged Mexican slugger turned heads with a gutsy knockout victory over Jorge Linares last year and is riding high after stopping John Molina in less than a minute on September 8th. That's Antonio DeMarco versus Adrian Broner live on World Championship Boxing November 17th from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Also that night, American heavyweight prospect Seth Mitchell takes on Jonathan Banks. And we begin round number nine of this scheduled 12 rounder. Erzlande Lara, Vanis Martirosian. No knockdowns to this point in the fight. Lara cut left eye from a punch in round seven. Oh, Scott! And the heads come together oh, again. And there's blood Time. really coming out of that left eye over the left eye of Martirosian. Let's go to the doctor. Yeah, they're going to stop this one. Cut. Yeah, they're going to stop this one. That's this a wrap. is the fourth yeah, time that left cut. eye has been cut. This is a wrap. They're going to have to stop this one. Trust me. Yeah, I can't see. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. going to stop this one. Yeah. I told you something was going to happen. And you hear Marta Rosen saying, I can't see at all. Yeah. I Spoiler mean, that, that is a terrible cut. And you score heard Jane Nady telling the judges, you have to score the round, despite the, the fact round. that only 26 seconds elapsed. Brutal cut on the left eye of Vanis Martirosian. But Martirosian still can win this decision because it will go to the scorecards. Harold, how do you score a round that went for 26 seconds? It, it ain't easy, let me tell you. I mean, is this where an even round is acceptable? An even round could be acceptable. I thought Eris Landy Lara landed a few punches early in round. But, you know, it may be the difference in a fight, Bob. Let's face reality. The rules are you got to score the partial rounds when a fight is stuck due to an accidental headbutt. All right, so I'll take out the copy box numbers here from this 26 seconds. Lara landed one of six. Roy, here's where yeah. they just came together. Yeah, they were both coming to throw power punches. The good thing for Lara was that his head, his chin was tucked. And as you saw, Bonarosa's chin wasn't tucked quite as low, so he got the worst of the head. But once again, you see both coming in. Lara's head is low. You see the top of his head hit the eye part of Martirosa. Lara head. knew there was going to be a clash of heads. He wisely lowered his head and turned his face well, away. Well, he didn't know that it was. He knew that there, it may be a clash of heads. Right, and he was protecting himself. Exactly. From the same thing that happened to Martirosa. Now, Copy Box had one of six connects for Lara in the round, and Martirosa was 0 for 2, according to Copy Box. Remember, Jane 80 instructing the Judges at ringside, you need to score the round despite the fact that only 26 seconds elapsed. It's an accidental clash of heads, so they got to go to the judges' cards. Smells like a rematch. <laughs> but you know, if you had this thing four apiece and you had to score that last round, that could be the difference in who wins and loses. Unless you score the last round even, then you got to draw. It pays to throw punches. <laughs> And you heard Martirosian when the, when the ringside physician came over to look at it. But fans, who do you think won? Text M for Martirosian, L for Lara, 53548. Five, Folks, when you come up with that decision before you send that text, make sure you judge that last round, all 26 seconds of it. Yeah, we got you. So is Lara victorious? Does Marta Rosian suffer the first loss of his career? Well, the judges' scorecards. Uh, well, Harold Letterman, let's take a look at who the judges are. 
Harold, let's take a look at the judges and a little scouting report. Yeah, I was waiting for it to come up. Okay, Dave Moretti, in my mind, the outstanding judge of the world. I mean, this guy's very good. He's the one that had Sugar Ray Leonard summit the five over Marvin Hagler. I love him for that decision. Ricardo Ocasio, one of the new guys, but judges is 2007, did a very, very good job in Juan Carlos Burgos over Luis Cruz. It was a majority decision. Uh, Ocasio had it right, 7-3 to three for Juan Carlos Burgos. Jerry Roth, definitely the veteran guy. Uh, I mean, the only knock on Jerry Roth is 115-113 in uh, Pacquiao, Timothy Bradley, but uh, at least he had the right winner. He didn't have it big enough. I've, I've got it 86-85. Uh, Five rounds to four, Eris Landy Lara. Very, very close fight either way. All right, let's find out how the judges had it scored. Here's Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, after an accidental clash of heads at the 26th second mark of round number nine, referee Jay Nitty calls a halt to the action in accordance with Nevada rules. We consult the official scorecard to determine a winner. Jerry Roth scores it. 86 to 85 in favor of Martirosian. <laughs> Ricardo Ocasio, 87 to 84 in favor of Lara. Yeah. And Judge Dave Moretti scores the bow. 86 to 86. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is declared a technical decision draw. Well, and, and Dave Moretti is the only one of the three judges that scored that partial round even. He had the final round, that 26-second ninth round, 10 to 10, thus 86-86. Meanwhile, Richard Ocasio had the round 10 to 9 in favor of Lara, and Judge Jerry Roth had the last round 10 to 9 in favor of Lara, although Roth's scorecard still went with Martirosian, but Dave Moretti, had he, had he uh, Dave Moretti scored that last round for either one, then that boxer would have won by way of split decision. So Moretti's 10-10, 26 second ninth round is the reason why we have a technical decision draw. Let's take a look at the final CompuBox numbers for Martirosian and Lara. Neither guy was very busy. Lara threw 31 punches per round. Martirosian through 30. Lara landed at a higher percentage. Power punches in the fight, 40 of 95 for Lara. Lara threw 11 power punches per round. Martirosian threw 20 power punches per round. He landed at 16%. Max Kellerman is standing by in the ring. He'll talk to both boxers. Max? Okay, and a draw. It doesn't really matter where we start, but Vanus, I'll start with you. What do you think about the official verdict draw? I mean, it was, a, it was a close fight. It was a close fight, but he ran all night. You know, it's not the amateurs, it's the professionals. He was running all night. You seem to be having some success early. As the fight wore on, he seemed to keep nailing you with that left hand. What did Freddie tell you in the corner to avoid getting hit with that punch? I mean, Freddie was telling me to keep pressing the action, you know, keep pushing pressure on him. You know, he was running all night. It was tough to catch him, you know. I mean, he's good from the amateurs, you know, getting points and running. That's all he was doing. A couple of times, he, it appeared, tried some rough stuff with you in the clinches, and you responded both times by whacking him with a right hand to the body. Tell me about that. I mean, you know, he's kind of a dirty fighter, you know. He got me a low blow, the head, but he keeps coming in with his head. I mean, he's good with stuff like that. Vanus, meanwhile, You've been criticized in your pro career for not fighting a top fighter. Here tonight, you stepped up and fought one of the best junior middleweights in the world. How do you feel about your performance? I feel great, you know, it sucks for the bat ahead, but you know, we, our plan was to come on later on because he gets tired, that's what we see. So, you know, the last round, I kind of took off and we wanted to finish strong, but unfortunately, the headbutt happened. Rematch, what's next for you? 100%, as soon as the stitches come out, I want to rematch, 100%. Thanks, Vanus. Eris Landy, your thoughts on the official verdict? Bueno, Vane es un buen peleador. Okay, este, le di golpe como me dio la gana. 
Eso fue un accidente, se dio un cabezazo. Lo que yo creo que no tiene corazón. Es un pendejo, no tiene corazón. You know, Vanis is a good fighter. But I hit him with everything. I hit him with everything that I wanted to. And you know, that was a headbutt. It happens in fights. He said you're a dirty fighter. You did appear to use some rough tactics in the clinches a couple times with some headlocks. What do you think about his comment? Eh, él dice que soy un peleador sucio. Nunca en mi vida me han quitado un punto por, por un golpe sucio ni nada que he hecho, he hecho mal. Eh, soy un excelente peleador y soy mejor peleador que él. Y lo he mostrado aquí y lo muestro aquí donde quiera. He said I'm a bad, he said I'm not a good fighter. He said I, 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 I low blows and fouls and all that stuff. But they never taken a point away from me in my life, in my entire life. And I show that here and I show that in my professional career. And I'll show it tonight and anywhere else. So, in official verdict so far, you still don't have an actual win against a top junior middleweight, even though most people feel like you've won those fights against top junior middleweights. I suspect most people will feel you probably won this fight too tonight. Why are you unable to get the official decision in big fights? No sé, oficialmente, recuerde que esta es una cartelera de Torran, esta es una cartelera, cartelera de Golden Boy, cartelera de Torran, y él es boxeador de Torran. Yo oficialmente iba en esta pelea. Remember that this is a top rank Golden Boy card, you know, and he's, a, he's one of their fighters. But I officially won this bout. La o, he tenido la mala suerte que la dos veces que he, pele, he peleado fuera de mi promoción, siempre pasa algo. Si no me roban la pelea, la dan empate. The bad thing, the bad luck that I've had in all those fights, it hasn't been my promotion. It's been a draw, or they say that I've lost. He said he'd like a rematch. Would you like a rematch? Yes, 100%. You know, and if we continue the fight, we could continue it right now. But absolutely, in the final few rounds, I was going up and he was going down. Can... Thank you, Erislandi. Tough luck fighter. I haven't seen you lose yet, but you can't get the wins. Bob.